What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp quick tutorial for you. So in this video I want to talk about how to adjust the axis settings within SketchUp. This is actually very important because your axis or your axes, they basically set your inferencing within your SketchUp model. And I think a lot of people don't know that you can actually change these to make your life a lot easier in SketchUp. So big thank you to Jim for requesting this tutorial. So Jim actually requested this tutorial in the comments down below a video. So I am reading all of your comments. So if you ever have a question or there's something that you don't think has been explained very well, make sure to leave that in a comment down below because I might just make a tutorial about it. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So you, a lot of you, if you've watched a bunch of my videos, you probably have noticed that I talk about the importance of modeling along the axes. And we've talked about that before. The reason that's important is because that way everything comes in as square and also on the same level. So remember, if you just kind of start clicking off into space, you never really know where your lines are going, which is why it's so important for you to, um, model along the axes because then you know exactly where your lines are going you know that everything's level you know that everything's going to work right however sometimes you have to model things that don't line up along the axes and then you start having problems with things inferencing right and uh, trying to kind of guess where things go and things get a little bit tricky and so the first thing I want to talk about is just how to replace or move your axes. and so there's a couple different ways to do this so you can start off and you can just go up to tools axes and then you can come in here and you can just click and you can set a new location for your axes so in this case if I wanted this to be along this corner I could just set the axis right here and basically in this case that didn't really change a whole lot because the directions that you're inferencing are still going to be the same however where this starts getting important is when you start modeling things that are kind of off axis so let's say for example that I wanted to start modeling based on something that doesn't necessarily come in here along the model axes that I have well what I can do is I can come in here and I can also go to the large tool set and click on the axes that way and I can align these along this object and so now when I start modeling based off of this all of my inferencing is going to work properly you can see how now my red and green axes are perpendicular and parallel to all the lines in here so it make thing, makes things a lot easier and so basically what you can do with this is you can use this to really quickly adjust the way all the inferencing is going to work in your model and I think what happens is I think a lot of people are afraid to change the axes because then they're afraid that their inferencing just isn't going to work the same way anymore and uh, it when you think about it, it's kind of silly because you can just kind of place them wherever you want them to be. Another way that you can quickly align your axes to an object is you can actually just right click on a face and click the button for align axes. And so what that's going to do is that's going to realign the axes based off a shape that you have selected. So if I come in here and I right click on this face and I click align axes, this will quickly align based off of that. So I can come in here and align these really quickly. And one of the, re one of the places where this would be really useful is if you're modeling based on a location and you're modeling stuff that doesn't necessarily align perfectly with a straight up and down um, right to left type axis system so let's say I bring this map in for example and let's say I wanted to build a house over here on this plot of land well you can see how right now if I come in here and I start drawing and I use the rectangle tool or anything like that that doesn't really align with everything else in this map well what I could do instead is I could come in here and I could actually set up my axes along this face so I would just set my red my green and my blue and now my axes would be aligned based on this new orientation that I set so now I could come in here and all my inferencing is gonna work properly and you can see how everything just kinda inferences and lines up based on this new axis orientation so this is really helpful instead of coming in here and trying to make everything fit and make everything work because um, you know that sometimes SketchUp doesn't necessarily work quite as well um, when you don't have the axes aligned with what you're trying to model and so sometimes you don't necessarily want to change your model axes. Well, what you can do instead is every single group and component in a SketchUp model also has its own set of axes. So let's say, for example, we'll come back in and draw this rectangle again. And we'll rotate it a little bit so it's a little bit off 
and I'll move it over and give it a little bit of thickness. And so if I was to come in here right now and I was to select this, I can right click on this and click make group. Well, you'll notice that if I double click inside the group, the axes for this group are different than the axes for my model. So each group and each component has its own set of axes. And so what you can do is instead of changing your entire model axes, you can come in here and you can change the axis for just this object. So if I come in here with the axis tool and click in here and reset the axes, now my model axis stayed the same, but if I click in here, my actual group axes are aligned with this object. So now I can come in here again and you can see how all my inferencing is gonna work properly. And so you can see how all of that inferencing works fine in here, um, and you don't have to worry about your actual model axes, those stayed the same. So that's another option, is just setting the axes within an object itself um, for what you need it to be. So another great example of this is if I was to come in here and let's say I was modeling something sloped like a roof or something like that. Well, if I was to come in here and I don't necessarily want to change the model axes, but I can come in here and let's say I gave this a little bit of thickness and I made this a group. I could just come in here and I could right click on this face and I could click align axes and then the axis inside that object um, will adjust. And one thing to note is inside a group, unless you use the axis tool, this is a temporary change. So if I come inside this group and I right click on this and I click align axes, it's going to temporarily align the axes along this face. But if I click outside of it and then I click back in, you can see how those weren't permanently reset. So I'm not sure if that's intentional or if that's a bug. So I wouldn't necessarily rely on it. But if you want to permanently change the axis orientation, inside an object, make sure you use the axes tool. And so you would just come in here and you would just align these based on this corner. Well now, I can come in here and I can use inferencing within this object. I've got it set up the way that I want, but I haven't actually changed anything outside of the group. Um, another thing to note when you do this is this is also going to adjust the scale tools bounding box. What that means is if I was to come in here right now and I was to give this thickness and I was to make this a group and try to use the scale tool on it, you can see how this isn't actually going to align with this object. And so it gets a little bit tricky trying to flip things or adjust things. But if you were to go inside this group, for example, and adjust the axes this way, and then you select everything and scale it, you can see how this bounding box is gonna line up. So if I undo this, you can see how this doesn't line. Basically the scale tool aligns with whatever your model axes are um, with the origin and everything else. So you can use this to make that scale tool actually line up with your object, which makes making changes, especially for off axis items, a lot easier. And then the last thing I want to know is you can also adjust the component axes when you're creating components. So one more kind of boxy, simple example. So if I was to come in here and I wanted to make this a component and I've selected the whole thing, when I right click and go down to make component, there's actually a button in here for set component axes. So what that means is when you first initially create your component, you can set what those axes are gonna align with. So if I click on this, I can come in here and I can set these by just clicking and aligning, and now those component axes are set. And I can do that as many times and in as many different orientations as I want to um, until I get what I want within this component. So whatever these axes look like when you finally click the button for create component, that's what they're gonna be for this object. So if I click create, then I click in here, you can see how the axes are aligned based on that. And so once again, now when I'm inside this object, and I want to inference things to right angles and stuff like that, you can see how the axes are aligned so that I can do that really easily. So that's kind of an overview of working with the axes within SketchUp. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Did I leave anything out? Is there anything you do with this tool that makes your life easier? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every 
little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.